Now for those of you that already own Philips Hue lights, you already know how awesome they are. And for those of you that are maybe just thinking about getting some, I'm here to tell you that they are pretty great. Now what I wanted to do in this video is show you the very best apps that I found uh, to use for controlling those lights, and also demo for you a few different effects and features that you probably haven't seen yet. And I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks that I found in setting them up over the last couple years that will hopefully help you be able to get the most out of your own setup. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, the first thing I want to mention is about music-related apps. This is one of the things people ask me about the most when they see my lights for the first time. And that's whether or not you can sync the lights with music. While there are apps out there that do this, in my experience, they don't work very well, and I've tried pretty much all of them. The problem is that the Hue bulb has too much latency in it at around 100 milliseconds. And plus, most of the apps try to use your phone's microphone to listen to the music and then sync that way, but this only really adds a delay, and the thing about syncing lights with music is if it's even off for a fraction of a second, it's really easy to tell and to me it completely ruins the effect. But I'll show you what I like to do instead for adding lighting effects with music a little later in the video. The other thing to mention is related to the native Philips Hue app. While it is a good app for basic control and scheduling functions, there's a big limitation when it comes to creating groups, which is that once a bulb is assigned to a certain group, you can't assign it to any other group. So for example, in my basement, sometimes I wanna be able to control my ceiling lights separate from my floor lights, but then once you do that, you can't create a larger basement group, which includes both. I do have a solution for this though, which is an app called Hue Widget. Now this is the main app I use for controlling all my Hue lights, and I think it's easily the best all around Hue app out there. You can almost tell how good an app is going to be just from how the app icon looks actually. If it's horrendous, there's a good chance the app's going to be pretty bad too. But the Hue Widget is super simple to use. You can put the same bulbs in different groups, and it adds some really cool convenient widget controls. But let me show you a quick demo. Alright, so let's go ahead and launch the app, which I have on my main home page here. And the app has all the controls across the bottom. So you can see the first thing you can control is individual lights. Um, you can control uh, groups of lights. You can control scenes, uh, set up your widgets, which I'll show you in a second, and then of course your settings here. So lights is easy enough. You can see I have floor one and two. Um, so that would be floor one on the left, floor two on the right. And all I have to do to turn the light off or on is just tap on the dot there, and you can see the light goes off. I'm mistapping because I'm looking at it through the camera lens. But anyway, that's how you control the light. And if you want to control the dimness, you just drag the slider. So you can see that's um, easy enough. It works really well. And then your groups is where I was saying you can group multiple things. So I have this all basement, which are all my basement lights, the floor lights, the ceiling lights, and then the Ikea lights. Um, and then I have all the individual lights on their own. So I have this group of ceiling lights on one group, the basement floors on another group, and the Ikea lamps on another group. And you can just see here if I tap that, it will just turn those off. So that's better than the regular Philips app because you can't do those multiple groups like that. So here, if I just wanted to control the floors, I can tap that and it will turn off all the floor lights separate from everything else. And then of course, if I wanted to turn off the entire basement, I just cl cl click on the all basement group and you can see all the lights goes off. So that works pretty much how you'd expect and want, in my opinion. And then the other thing is when you have a group, you can tap there and you can see the groups of lights there. So if I wanted to just kind of uh, change the color, I can drag them around. Now the only limitation of this is you can only put six lights in a group within your group. Uh, so if you want them to be all the same color, you got to kind of drag them together. So anyway, that's that and that's groups. So that works really good. And then you have your scenes. So you notice I have scenes here, the regular Philips um, app has scenes as well, but here it's a little different. The reason why I think scenes works better in this than the Philips Hue app is because the Philips Hue app, it limits your scenes to, you know, an individual group. So once a bulb's in the ceiling, basement ceiling, you can't have another group that includes any of the bulbs that are in the basement ceiling. So it's kind of, it's very limited. So here, um, the scene just works better because you can put any number of bulbs in any different number of scenes. But in any event, I have one here called work. Um, and that just puts green and white lighting all around. And I have another one called Premiere Pro here. And that changes to the, basically the color of, like when I'm editing, I'll show you here. You can see this green, blue, and like this pink color. So I have the green there that would focus um, blue and then purple color up top. So it looks kind of like matching when I'm editing. So it's kind of neat to have that light. 
you know kind of set the same way so it's pretty cool I think then I have a lava lit one called lava lit which just turns the floor lights red and then the ceiling lights a regular normal room color and then just a random one called bluey here and I'll hit that and it just changes so that's the main general functions of the Hue widget app. What I want to show you now, though, is the actual widget functionalities of the app, which I think are the best part. So let's say if you're on your home page, all you have to do is swipe over to the screen and you can see you have your widget controls right here. And what this allows you to do is you, is you see here at the top, you have groups of lights, regular lights, uh, individual lights, I should say, and then your scenes. So let's say I'm on the group here, right? Um, let's say you're on the home screen. You want to quickly control the group. You click here. And then you can see where I have basement ceilings. I can just turn it off by tapping that, and it will turn off just the ceiling lights. Um, I can turn them on. I can set them to a random color. And then here are the dimness controls. So it's really like 10%, uh, like 25%, 50 and then 100%. It would be a little bit cooler if it was a slider, but that's how it works if you just want some quick dimness control. So that's kind of cool. And then you can, can restrict these controls to whatever rooms or groups you have set up here and you do that in the app. So let me just show you that. You see here you can um, you can elect to show lights, show groups, show scenes or show imported scenes I don't mess with or you can have rooms. So all that means is it shows up here groups, lights, scenes, you can have rooms and stuff across the top. And yeah that's basically the quickest way you can think about controlling it. Also if you, let's say you're in an app, let's say I'm in Spotify and I'm messing around or whatever, maybe I'm in Chrome and I wanna quickly control my lights. All I have to do is pull down from the top and then my controls are right here. So I can say, oh, let's turn the basement floors off. And then they'll all just turn off. And hopefully you can tell that's really convenient. The other thing you're able to do is you can control here individual bulbs. So I only have two bulbs here because that's all I really added. You can add all your bulbs in here and have a bunch of them to press, but these are the only individual bulbs I ever really control. And then you can do your scene selection as well. So here are the ones I selected. So hopefully you can tell from that how useful this widget function is. And like I say, you can pull it from any, wherever you are, you can pull the drop down real quick and then bang, you have all your controls. The other cool thing is you don't have to actually unlock your phone either. Um, let's say you just do that. Just hit the button and you can pull it down and then bam, you have all your controls again. Set them on random. Whatever you wanna do, you know, set your dimness, turn them off or on. Um, so like I say, best way to control it, definitely recommend you downloading it and checking it out. For some different effects and things like that, I use an app called Thorlight. So I'm going to show you guys that. So with this app Thorlight, what you got to do is really got to make sure you have things set up. So there's a thing here called, uh, well, you have your individual lights, your groups of lights, and then light link and light band. Room I'll ignore because I only have one room that I have few lights in here really in this house. But if you have multiple rooms, um, you can set that up. It doesn't really add too much though. What's really important is the light link and the light band. So a light link, you can see I have all these associations. So what you're supposed to do is that's floor light one there, and that's floor light two, and then uh, ceiling light one, two, three, four, all the way back uh, to 10. And with the light links, what you're supposed to do for the animations is make sure, for example, that floor two is linked to hue light number two. And also that floor two is uh, linked to hue light number one. So what you do essentially is map each individual light to its neighboring lights. So for example, this light will be uh, linked to that one, it will be linked to that one, and then it will be linked to that one as well. And you just go on down the line, and what that does is when there's some different animations, like the red light here that I'm showing you in this, in this clip, is you see the red light travel around, it moves in a pattern according to how you have all the lights linked. So you know, I have three lights or three different lights in these um, IKEA lamps and they're all linked to each other all the way down. So a light can travel up and down them as you see in the video here. So that makes a pretty neat effect. And that's linking. Now the other setup issue that's a little bit un unusual as well is a light band. So a light band in the tunnel effect I'm showing you here, what it will do is it will change those two uh, light colors and then rotate them up and over and then down the Ikea lamps and down to the floor lamps. So it basically kind of um, sends a one color of light through the whole set of lights, if that makes sense. Hopefully the video here can show you what I mean. So the way you set that up is this is the first band, right? So you gotta imagine it just on a, a straight row. So that's band number one. 
and then the second set of lights is band two and then this would be you know band three and then I have some LEDs under there which I match up with these guys and then this would be band four and then there's another LED in the back of the couch and I'll match it with this floor so you get it's just you can imagine just as a straight line going down in bands and then what you want to do is if you have these kind of like triple lights in a lamp you want to put the top row on one band this row on another band and then the bottom row of lights on on the last band because that way the light will just fall through if you can imagine it just rotating through the bands so hopefully that explains how to set it up maybe you got you might have obviously a pretty different arrangement in your house but that's the way you get this really cool effect that you're seeing on the screen now where the lights just um, cycle all the way through and you just have to have the lights mapped and the more the better you have the your lights mapped and your hue set up uh, the better this app will work and honestly I don't use a lot of different effects in my day-to-day -day use of the lights but they are fun to play with in my experience a lot of them get a little bit annoying after after a while but the good thing about the Thor light app is that you can mix the different effects across multiple groupings of your lights and I think this works well for using it with music and even better than any dedicated music app let me show you what I mean by that So hopefully that gives you a sense of what it's able to do when you mix up the different effects across your lights. So I had one effect going on, on my ceilings, one on my floor lights, and then one on the lamps in the back. And to me, that works better than all those music apps out there, which can do similar things, but I don't feel like they give you as much control as just being able to set your own effects to your own groups using the Thor light. I think it works a little better. So but anyway, you can play around with it with your own music and just see how you like it. I think it works pretty good. The final app I want to tell you about is called Light DJ. Now this has some pretty neat abilities as well, but the downfall of it is that the UI is so bad. Uh, it does do some cool stuff if you can deal with the ugliness of the app and figure out kind of how to use it. You can see a lot of the different effects I'm showing you now on screen that's able to do. So it's definitely another one worth giving a try out, but I don't personally use it too much. It also gives you the ability to sequence your lighting effects if you want and you're able to create a very customized effect with all your lights with timing changes and colors and stuff like that. But it was, it's really hard to use and figure out, so I just gave up on it. But you might have better luck yourself. Now, moving away from apps, I wanted to tell you one of the best things you can get for your Hue lights is their little Hue dimmer switch. So this is it here. It's just a wireless remote control for your Hue lights, and it works really great. So I want to demo it for you real quick and show you some of the few different functions it can do. Now, here you see uh, where you can just cycle or turn off and on the lights. And every time you hit the on button, there's five different um, modes it will cycle through while well, there's scenes really and you set that up in the Philips Hue app so every time you press the on button it will cycle your lights and whatever uh, groups you have assigned to flick them on and off as you can see and then there's the dimmer switches in the middle which you can either press them uh, to dim or uh, increase the brightness or you can hold down the button it works either way and so it's it's really pretty useful and the other thing that's cool is it comes with this uh, wall plate which has adhesive on the back and this allows you to stick the Hue remote really anywhere next to your doorway. Here I have it under my desk, but if you have it in the entrance to a room, it makes it really convenient. And it's cool just to have a remote that detaches, so if you want to set, you know, set it next to you on the couch, it works really well. Um, so it's really just a convenient item and um, definitely a must-have, I think, if you have Hue lights. Right, so the last thing I want to show you guys is just the ability to control your Hue lights from a desktop PC or your Mac or whatever, laptop, whatever you use. You can see here I have Chrome open, and most of the time when I'm on my computer, I'm in Chrome. And what's cool about this is there's a couple extensions. Now there's this one called Light Switch Pro, which is the best one that I found, but unfortunately it has problems um, keeping the connection here. So I would recommend trying this one out first and see if you don't have an issue on your network. Um, because this one's a little bit nicer, has a little bit more wider range of controls, but this newer one I found is Chrome Hue Beta. And you can you know, click that and you see the lights turn off. You control your brightness. Some very basic settings for if you wanna get at your, um, your hue light controls maybe if you're on your couch on your laptop or anything like that it's really easy because it's just a chrome extension so that's pretty cool um, and then the other thing i wanted to show you is there's a similar one for um, mac this is the better one i found i haven't personally tried it on on my on our mac but um, this looks nice you can see it just puts a, the light bulb icon in your taskbar so it's always you're know, able to click on it very quickly so 
that's pretty cool. And then the last thing I want to just mention is this app I found, which is Hue Dynamic. And you can see down here in my taskbar, you can launch it. Now this costs five bucks. It's a Windows, uh, you know, Windows 10 app. But you can see it does give you some cool scenes and light controls in here. Um, I will tell you that one of the better things that this does, this is probably the best music related app that I've found as far as being able to sync up. It still doesn't work that great, but it has a pretty cool um, music feature function in here. And that one other thing that I wanted to show is with this app, you can, if I can find it under the dimmer switch here, you can program your dimmer switch to uh, do something if you long press it, which adds a little bit more functionality than just the native Phillips app. But um, I don't really use that, but this is a pretty cool app if you want to check it out, but it does cost five bucks. I don't, and I don't, like I said, I don't really know if it's worth it. And finally, I just want to mention that voice control is my favorite way to control Hue lights. So whether that's using Siri, Echo, or Google Home, it's extremely convenient to be able to turn your lights on and off and set your brightness levels and colors and everything like that. I personally prefer the Echo family of devices, especially now that they finally added the ability to change the colors. Alexa, turn the floor lights purple. So those are pretty much all the tricks I know for getting the most out of my Hue lights. And if you know of any you'd like to share, please hit the comments up. But I hope this video has given you some ideas for your own home setup. But thanks a lot for watching, and y'all take care.